my dad makes fun of me that I'm a gang girl because I love kinky so much. Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're making kinky. You can buy your condo or you can make the condo yourself. We always make our condo ourselves and you start by soaking the corn kernels in water you're going to do that for two days and after day one you're going to change the water or rinse the water off and then add some more water and then once that's done you take the corn to a mill add some water to the milled flour and then make that into a dough for this one it took about two or three days for the corn dough to ferment And so you're going to take your dough and you're going to divide that into three parts. You're going to take one part and that's the part that we're going to cook. It's called a flatter. The second part you're going to keep raw. We're going to eventually mix that with the cooked dough. And you're going to make the mixture adding some water. Now usually I would not measure any water when I'm making kinky or even generally when I'm cooking but for the purposes of this video I just have to say that I did measure the water so that when you're trying to replicate it it becomes a bit easier for you to do so so you're going to take that one part of the dough and you're going to add some water and then make that into a sort of a liquid paste you're also going to be adding some salt to that because kinky without salt is not nice kinky and then you're going to put that over the stove and then cook it like the way you would cook akpala or banku. So just make sure that it's actually cooked. And then once that is cooked, we're going to add it to the two parts of the raw dough. Now initially, obviously, the aflata is going to be very hot, so you're going to want to use a wooden spoon to stir that. But once it becomes a bit cooler, then you can use your hands. I just find that using your hands is, gives it a better mix. And so you're just going to make sure that you've mixed everything in properly and then at this point we are ready to form our balls of kinky now we're going to be using corn husks to wrap the balls of kinky also called agobo i don't know what what language agobo is but then that's what we say at home you have to take the corn husks apart from the whole piece and then once you've done that, just inspect for any bits of dirt or those, those tassels that you get from the corn. Just make sure that you take those out. You're going to soak them in some water so that they get soft. You don't want to use them hard like that. It's going to be difficult to do so. So you want to soak the agobo in water. And then at this point, we are ready to form our balls of kinky. So then you're going to take a ball into your hand and then take a piece of the agobo. What we are trying to do is to wrap the ball with agobo, making sure that we cover everything. Now you can see on the screen, I'm trying to demonstrate how to do that. I must admit, I'm not super perfect at wrapping the balls. What you want to be looking out for is that once you put the twisted ends into the kinky, you want to make sure that it's compact and that you don't have any gaping holes. Because if you do have big holes and then you start steaming or cooking the kinky and the water gets in there, it can quickly happen that your kinky falls apart. So that's something you want to make sure of. Make sure that your ball is compact and then any holes that you may have are, are, are closed, so to speak. If you're in Europe or anywhere else and you can't get a gobo. Now what my sister and I used to do when we used to live in Germany was that 
we still wanted to eat kinky. We knew how to make kinky. It's just that we couldn't get any dough or we couldn't get any agobo. So what we did was, you can get your little banku mix <laughs> from the shops. And I know that has cassava dough, but for us it worked at the time. So we just used the same method, but we used the banku mix. Instead of agobo, you can use some cling film to wrap the balls and then wrap those balls that you've put in cling film in aluminum foil and then boil it. And then you sort of get like a pseudo kinky. For us, it was exciting because it was the closest thing to kinky that we could get at the time. Now it's a bit more common to get actual kinky in Europe and America. more tips and tricks you can find up on gingerandseasalt.com the full recipe is up on the blog as usual i honestly think this kinky tastes so much better than a lot of the kinky that i have personally been buying recently my mom helped me with this because it was really a big task she helped me shout out to my mom for teaching me how to make kinky and so she was also a part of this you see her hands and other body parts probably in this video as well yeah we got about 30 30 35 pieces of kinky so you're going to do that for all the balls and then once that's done, you're ready to cook. So our kinky balls are ready. So you're going to put some of the agobo um, at the bottom of, of the big steel pot that we're going to use. And then we're going to pack the kinky on there with the, the part where we twisted is going to come to the top. And then we're going to stack them beautifully in this pot. the price of gas has gone up significantly and kinky does take a long time to cook so typically what we do in my house is that when we're cooking kinky we're always going to do it over charcoal on a cold pot that's just the most efficient way to do it and we don't have to be crying secret tears about about your gas getting finished so a word of advice if you're trying to cook kinky the best things to do is to use a coal pot and some charcoal. And you can see right there, I got into my, you know, gear and then, and then let the coal, just use some newspapers. That is also ready to go. So add some hot water, just so that we get this cooking quickly and then set that onto the coal pot. Now, of course we want to make sure that we're not just cooking it, but we're steaming it so that the bits on the top also get steamed properly because you're not going to be filling the whole pot with water that's just going to be too much and your kinky is more likely to fall apart what we're going to do is we're going to use this big huge plastic that we have to cover them so that all the steam remains and the kinky gets cooked beautifully every now and then we check to see that there is enough water and to make sure that our kinky is still intact so to speak And so at this point, we're just going to let our kinky simmer. Like I said, you want to be checking to make sure that the water is still enough. If it's not enough, just get a kettle, boil some water, and then pour that on top. And so after many hours, our kinky is finally done. A few of the kinky balls came apart because, yeah, they were not properly wrapped. But it's not the end of the world. Once you let those cool down a bit, they are actually good to eat. I do hope that you will try. You don't have to make such a large quantity. I think the thing to remember is that, one, you're mixing two parts of raw dough with one part of the cooked. So once you sort of get that ratio, you know. And then once you also get the ratio of how much water to add to that one part of dough, you're basically good to, good to go. You can eat kinky with a whole lot of things. 
you can eat it with ground pepper so ground scotch bonnets and onions and tomatoes just quickly in a earthenware or mashing bowl and then with shito and then with fish that's my video for kinkin and kinkin is quite a bit of a process but for me it's absolutely worth it because i absolutely love kinkin so i hope that you enjoyed this fantastic um recipe like i said kinky my all-time favorite and i will see you on the next video happy eating